what I was feeling to do today actually is to I came across this very nice translation of the Ashtavaka Gita by Bart Marshall. It's very beautiful. I just was skimming through it yesterday. So I felt I, re I could read a little bit from this. You like Ashtavaka? Yeah, it's a sister. Hey, came closer. So today I'm actually going to listen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the translator's introduction. I feel I feel to read the intro also. It's very nice. There is an ancient spiritual document of great purity and power. Pure because it is relentlessly one pointed. Every word is aimed at triggering self-realization. No suggestions for self-improvement, <laughs> no rules for moral behavior, no practical wisdom for daily life. <laughs> Powerful because the mere reading or repeated reading of it can be enough to send a right mind reeling into truths. Little is known about the Ashtavakra Gita. Ashtavakra is a name that appears in Indian lore, but almost certainly he did not write it. <laughs> These are not my words, I'm just reading what the introduction is. <laughs> the author, likely an anonymous sage, merely uses the characters of Ashtavakra and King Janaka to set up a classic dialogue between guru and disciple. It quickly becomes a guru guru dialogue, however, because after the first salvo of wisdom from Ashtavakra, Janaka realizes, realizes his true self. And from then on, they get into an Advaitic jam session of the highest sort. <laughs> Just a couple of things coming up to say about this. One is that uh, this is the first time actually I'm reading something like the author saying that it is not actually Ashtavakra and Janaka in the dialogue. I heard this many times about the Bhagavad Gita because everyone said at least it cannot be on the battlefield that the war was about to start and then these two took like a good amount of time and say, give us, give us a few minutes, we are sorting something out. So Ashtavakra actually, whatever little I know about him, is famous also in Indian, uh, in India because Ashtavakra means the eight Contractions or the eight, what is the right word? Crippled at eight places or contortion in some way, bent in eight places. So, eight places he was bent. And he's uh, known as that sage who was bent, but his body was completely convoluted because it was bent at eight places. And Janaka also we speak about in satsang sometimes. Because Guruji has this example of telling everyone that. Everyone wants the Janaka style enlightenment. What does it mean? So Janaka was a king. He was a king and, and he was an enlightened sage. So somewhere, the Guruji also speaks that one of the fear that came for him, that he's going to be a hunchback beggar on the streets of Brixton after he becomes free or something like this. He was going to be like Quasimodo, he says sometimes that he will be begging on the streets. So this fear can come. And because this fear can come, we can have this idea that I want that the Janaka had. I want to be the king of my kingdom. I want to have my attachments and also be free. So in this we'll discover what Janaka's true attitude was, whether there was any attachment to the kingdom also. We'll find out. Actually, I, I read the Ashtavakra Gita many, many years ago. Many years ago. Just and Otherwise, it's just been few bits here and there. So let's see, let's see what it reveals. Then he says, because of, because of this, some translators have done away with the dialogue format and attributed everything to Ashtavakra. Indeed, since all the verses of the Ashtavakra Gita exist at the highest possible level of spoken wisdom, it would appear meaningless to attribute some to the teacher and some to the newly enlightened discipline, disciple. 
there is nevertheless a storyline set up in the Ashtavakra Gita. And for me, it goes somewhere like, something like this. <laughs> Chapter 1. It all starts when King Janaka asks the state, sage Ashtavakra how he can attain knowledge, detachment, liberation. And Ashtavakra tells him. Chapter 2. It works. <laughs> Upon hearing Ashtavakra's words, Janaka realizes his true nature. Enraptured, he describes the joy and wonder of his new state. Chapter 3. Ashtavakra is delighted for Janaka, but sees inconsistencies. He fires off a series of confrontational verses about attachment to worldly pleasure. This is what we were talking about. Chapter 4. Janaka asserts that the Lord of the universe can do as he pleases. Chapter 5. Ashtavakra does not disagree, but in a terse four verses, in, in a terse four verses, points to the next step, dissolution. Janaka says, I know that already. Matching him in style and number of verses. Chapter 7. Unable to leave it at that, however, Janaka goes on to further describe his enlightened state. <laughs> Chapter 8. Still too much I in Janaka's language. Ashtavakra instructs him in the subtleties of attachment and bondage. <laughs> Chapter 9. Ashtavakra continues to describe the way of true detachment. Chapter 10, Ashtavakra hammers away at the folly of desire, no matter how elevated or subtle. Chapter 11, Ashtavakra further describes the state of desirelessness to which he points. Okay, this full, there are many, many chapters. <laughs> Let's start. Thank you.